Hi everybody, sorry that there's been a delay since the last vlog. In this week's vlog, we popped to Bletchley Park, home of the Code Breakers. I'm also going to show you how I used form card to fix my DSLR camera audio input because it keeps going wrong and it's a nightmare. We also venture to Italy and get caught up in a completely random carnival in the middle of the night. I get sent up for a baptism of fire by my instructor for some 20 knot crosswind landings in the Cessna 172. And also if you follow my Instagram, you'll know that I've now got the Mavic Pro 2. We take that to Italy as well for a quick test out and also enjoy some lovely food. Let's get on with the vlog guys. I hope you enjoy it and let's get going. So then guys, welcome. Today we are at Bletchley Park in the center of the country. Um, Bletchley Park, if you haven't heard of it before, was used during World War II as a center for gathering Morse code messages, often encrypted, and then breaking them down, finding out what those messages were, and then effectively using the information that they got to um, use them on the battlefield and save lives, and also, you know, know what was coming. This is the famous Manor House. During World War II, the government housed the Government Code and Cipher School here. They were very important in breaking the Axis Powers encrypted Enigma and Lawrence ciphers. The Enigma machine is probably the more famous one that you're going to have seen, but also among its most notable early personnel was the team of Alan Turing, Gordon Welshman, Hugh Alexander, and also Bill Tutt, all of which were absolutely amazing mathematicians. And also, all this work culminated in the development of Colossus, which was the world's first program programmable digital electronic computer. Guys, I cannot stress this enough, without what they did here at Bletchley Park, the mobile phone that you're watching this on now, or the computer that you're watching it on now, might not have even existed in the form that it's currently in in front of you. So, whoops, sorry. <laughs> so we're inside the famous manor house at the moment. I'm trying to be a bit quiet because it is a museum. And it's an amazing place to have been in the war. It must have been absolutely buzzing with activity. But there's a lot of young people here. The average age of people here must have been about 25. They're at home still, or oh, they're in the country, you know, the local pubs are still open, all that sort of stuff. There must have been a lot going on here outside of code breaking. This just must be a story in itself. Bletchley Park was also the home of the bomb machines devised by Alan Turing with the help of his colleagues. The bomb machine was used to find out what rotor settings were being used on the Enigma that day by the German army. Now I'm not going to go into how the Enigma machine worked, it's very very complicated. I'll leave links to the Enigma machine Wikipedia page and also Bletchley Park at the bottom because it's such a complicated subject, it's best you go off and research it yourself if you're interested. That being said, I found one of the most poignant parts of the whole day was the fact that that sometime information couldn't be acted on. So if we knew that there was a planned German attack against British forces, we'd have to make a call as to whether we were gonna to react to that because we didn't want the German army to know that we'd broken their code. Obviously, all the operations at Bletchley Park were top secret and all the personnel who were on site had to sign the Official Secrets Act. I'm gonna leave Bletchley Park with a brief recording of one of the ladies who worked on the machines. I remember one sad occasion, a girl was sitting, typing away, you know, middle of the night and all of a sudden she burst out crying and she typed the name of her fiance's regiment and then underneath she typed heavy losses and she just couldn't go on with it but that was the sort of information you got it was it was rather nerve-wracking still to come in this vlog there's flying diving carnivaling and droning but next we've got some riveting camera maintenance, yow. Right then guys, a very rudimentary setup today because I'm about to go on holiday, so I'm not actually filming on my normal camera. This is my, my normal like vlogging camera here. I'm actually filming on my smaller work camera that I use for the other channel. I've had problems in the past with the microphone input on the actual side of my DSLR, especially on Canons because they leave them quite kind of exposed and I've had problems with it in the past kept getting broken. I had the old Rode video mic and that had a molded in wire to it, so if that breaks, your mic's broken. Thankfully, Rode have now let out this amazing new Video Mic Plus, which is quality. There's some features on there that quickly run through it. The mic turns on and off when you turn your camera on and off. That is like the biggest thing. The amount of times I've turned my Canon on, uh, gone to do like a piece of camera or some sort of shot, forgot to turn the mic on and it's ruined the whole thing. So I would do a really in-depth review of this. I actually bought a dead cat. Uh, for this as well and I've done some sort of wind reviews uh, at my local aerodrome which is bloody windy so look at this 
But anyway, we're not talking about the gimbal, we're not talking about the mic, we're talking about how I'm gonna try to protect this input here. What I've bought is this stuff. This is form card. Apparently you melt, make and mend. So all I need to do is remove a form card bit from the packaging, make sure the sticky glue dot is removed, fill a cup with boiling water, let it cool down a little bit, drop form card in. When it goes floppy, it's ready. Then I should be able to mold it around what I want um, and then leave it to go hard and that's it. So what I'm thinking is I'll use some of this form card to sort of mold around this. And what I'm gonna try and do is catch the, um, the, the little buckle for the actual strap for the cannon. I never use the strap for my cannon because it's always mounted on the gimbal. You can't have a strap with a gimbal, it'll just get in the way all the time, driving nuts. So let's give this a rinse now and see what it's like. Get my phone card ready. Oh yeah, well there. God, Emily, look at this. Uh, I'm gonna need some glass or something. Once the form card was floppy, I pulled off a piece that I thought would be big enough to go around my audio input and use my fingers to form it in position. I waited five minutes for the plastic to harden, then pulled it off. Now I've got kind of that mold. So now when this is plugged in, it's much more protected. You can see it can hardly move. If something bangs that, it's not gonna, it's hopefully because it's molded around the camera, it's not actually gonna, like come off, so let's give it a sound test. Right, so, <clears throat> turn the gimbal on and record. So, hopefully you guys can hear me okay at the moment. Is everything okay? Can you hear me okay? Look, I can't even move that input now. That's absolutely soldered on there. That's never going anywhere, look at that. Oh, that is wicked, really pleased with that. Now I'm gonna travel to Italy and then I'm gonna uh, tell you exactly whether it worked or right or not. Yes! Welcome to today's time to change. Look at my belly! <laughs> So 10 of my mates, Bumhead and myself, rented a villa about 40 kilometers north of Rome. We decided we were only gonna go there for five days, a really quick break, and it was great to be able to do that halfway through September when the English summer was waning a little bit. Hey guys, yes. Dr. Schneebly, Modage, Addy Waddy Booba, Roro, Cosa Wazza, Bumhead. Also we have Adam and Princess Leah. Also, one other thing, we discovered the best song ever of a holiday called Creamy Man. Creamy Man. Here's a segment of it now. Creamy Man, take me to the high in a chosen life, but you understand. If, uh, if anyone from the band The Cream Team do have legal representation, then get in contact with my people. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'll leave a link to that in the description below. You can check it out on Spotify. Enjoy. Okay, the latecomers to the pool were Cleo, her boyfriend Craig, and Steve the Weave. We spent our day swimming in the pool, reading books on the sun lounges, drinking far too much wine and far too much beer, playing cards, and also having far too many barbecues. How's it going, guys? <laughs> Oh mate, I just I could never be a chef, Craig. One hundred percent, never. Dude, how, I mean it's hot enough just here now, let alone being in like an enclosed kitchen where it's baking hot the whole time. So here's to the chefs out there because you guys have got it bad, we've got it good. <laughs> At the moment, I feel your pain. <laughs> Later that night, while we were sitting on the veranda having a chat, we could hear the banging of drums and shouting and hollering and singing from the centre of town. So we decided to walk in and see what was going on. The Kinnashe, nell'anno domini 2016, dallo Mastro Cencio. What's happening, Craig? Tell everyone what's happening. I'm really not sure. I don't know why we came here or what we're expecting, but so far. So weird. <laughs> right now, we're in a town called what? Civitas. 
super secret. We're basically in their, their main square at the moment in their town that they're at. And yeah, there's something happening. There's like a, a festival going on here at the moment. So we're having a look and just coming out here, seeing what's going on. A lot of families about at the moment, lots of people. It'd be nice if we could find somebody who speaks English so we can interview them about what's going on. I speak English. I know you speak English. It soon became apparent that we'd stumbled into a festival that commemorated the patron saint of Savita Cassiana and also seemed to have the major families of the town coming through with their respective bands and dancers. thing culminated in the major family sitting on the stage whilst a huge trumpet fanfare signalled the arrival of all of the families. It was a steamy hot night and one of those things you can only stumble across when you're in the rural parts of Italy and it was absolutely wicked. Um, what is... But, but I, I don't understand very well uh, English. Okay. Where are you from? Uh, Cambridge? Uh, Cambridge. Emily, take that. Hold that. <laughs> oh my god. Right. So, um, what is the festival about? The festival. Uh, this is the, um, the festival of our town. Yeah. And um, uh, we are two saints, uh, two person saints. Okay. Marciano and Giovanni, a father and son, uh, who give uh, uh, their blood for God. We're going to leave Civita Castellana for Duxford so we can have a look at some of my crosswind landers that we did last week. But don't worry, we'll be back in Italy in a few minutes time to have a very brief look at the Mavic Pro 2. So I turned up for my flying lesson as usual and to be honest I was expecting it to be cancelled because we had like an 18 to 20 knot crosswind which for a Cessna is like the maximum that you can really do crosswind landings in. It might have been a little bit less of a crosswind but for me it felt adequate enough to be pretty testing. So anyway Jeremy my instructor said look you've got to get up there and learn how to do more crosswind landings you never know you might take off in a plane one day in the future and have to make landings like this. So he wanted to see five or six of these landings so let's have a look at them now. What we're going to do is we're going to speed through the standard circuit and we're just going to watch each landing in turn. Now on late final we've got full flap, so that's three stages of flap and as you can see the wind is going from left to right across the front of the nose. The nose would usually be obviously down the centre of the runway. I'm putting left aileron in and then I'm going to kick the right rudder in a minute just before touchdown to straighten the plane up and then we should touch down about now. As you can see it's a lot more uh, challenging to land the plane when it's in this kind of configuration, it's just really really difficult. Let's have a look at a few more landings, the last one I think was my best uh, but there were definitely a couple of bumpy ones on this one as well so let's check them all out. You can really see here the way I'm having to uh, crab the plane into that wind that's going left to right across the runway as we look at it. Uh, just to make sure that we stay on the centre line of the runway and then use the rudder right at the last minute to straighten the plane up so we get a nice straight touchdown. Um, this takes practice, I've not done it loads myself so that's where you're going to see some ropey landings as well.
After a while, the wind really did pick up and the control tower requested that I come in and I was like, guys, I'm very happy to come in, don't you worry. So this is my last landing and I've got to say, it's the one I'm most proud of. They've definitely got to be the most challenging landings I've done in a while. Oh, that's, that's done me. So my very good friend Craig is currently holding the gimbal. So it's not great way, weather today, is it Craig? No. But it's still really warm and England at the moment is about four degrees. Look at that cave as well we've got. This place is mental, isn't it? So big. So I've not done a great deal of flying with this beast. In fact, I've only flown it once. So I thought it'd be a good time now to take it off. The new Mavic Pro 2, one inch sensor. My God, the sensor on this thing is ridiculous. What I love as well, that, I like that. It's a nice little addition. Screwing in your bits like that. I would do a proper review, but I can't be bothered, Craig. First, the actual flight characteristics of the Mavic Pro 2 are exactly the same as the earlier Mavic. You're going to find that the Mavic Pro 2 is slightly heavier than the old one, and also you're going to find that it's a little bit quicker and has slightly longer battery life as well. I found that in high wind situations, it really held its own. The gimbal was absolutely still the whole time. A spirit level would never have been able to know that there was a wind out there, believe me. The thing that impressed me the most is obviously we've got an adjustable aperture on this new drone, which means we can get a greater depth of field, which makes shots like this with a foreground and a background that's quite far away look absolutely wicked. On top of that the one inch sensor means we get a lot more colour onto the sensor which means in post we're going to be able to do a lot more colour correcting and editing is going to be a lot easier. I'm going to admit now that I still haven't found my favourite render settings for the Mavic Pro 2 but a little bit of tinkering over the next few weeks and I should be able to get it just right for you guys. Another great advantage of having a one inch sensor is the low light work you can do with the Mavic Pro 2. Just check out some of the stuff we did when it was almost dark with the old Mavic you'd never have been able to get shots like this. very pleased with the purchase of the Mavic Pro 2. I cannot wait to be using it on future vlogs. I'm going to be taking it to Spain with me really soon. So you're going to see shots from Andalusia, Seville and Marbella. So it's going to be absolutely great. A fantastic wedding that I cannot wait to do. So, so please subscribe if you want to see what happens out there. I had a great time at all the destinations in this vlog, especially with my mates in Italy. We tried to go away once a year and sometimes it's not possible and it was just great to get away with all our mates this year and have a really good catch up and a nice bit of drinky poo as well. Thanks ever so much for watching the vlog this week guys. Please come back next week. Please hit that subscribe button. That's what this is all about. I want you guys to subscribe. Also, I'd like you to tell me in the comment section below if you've got this far, how you think I can improve my vlogs. I will read every comment and I'll reply to everyone as well. Thanks ever so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next vlog. Peace. Creamy man, take me to the high in a chosen life, but you understand. Creamy man, know that in my body, I want to say that I say. Creamy man, why?